One, two, test one, two. One, two, testing one, two, one, two. Praise the Lord. We're going to sing a few songs here. Hope y'all worship the Lord with us and uh, hope it's a blessing to you.
right, we're going to get ready to begin our evening session. Uh, Sister Perkins is coming to lead us in our devotion and congregational singing. seeking the Lord for these two congregational songs. They are old songs. Some of these young ones may not remember them. But they speak about the Spirit and they speak about the power of God. Uh, they speak about the book of Acts. So I want us to worship uh, the Lord together. The first one is I was there when the Spirit came. How many knows that song? Yeah, it's, it goes way back. But it's a good song and let's worship the Lord. Listen to the message. I was there when the Spirit came. I felt the power and I praised His name.
that you were there when the Spirit came, when the Holy Ghost moved. We don't want to talk about it being a thing of the past. But if the Lord saved you, sanctified you, and baptized you with the Holy Ghost, you felt the Spirit. I appreciate what Sister uh, Mara said in her message about the, this not being our convention. This is God's convention. And I want to be submissive to the will of God. I don't want to leave here Sunday afternoon the same. I want to be uh, blessed and energetic for the work of the Lord. How many knows that she said that the Lord's coming soon? Amen. We need the Spirit to operate. Another old song is just says, let it fall on me. Am I throwing some new ones out there? Did it, who remembered the song after we sung it? Did anybody know that song? Well, the ones who go way back. Well, you just learn a new one tonight. You get to learn another one. But these songs, I remember singing these growing up. And the, the Spirit of the Lord would move individuals. And they would shout under the Spirit. They would seek the Lord under the Spirit. We need that Spirit operating. Amen. The Spirit hasn't changed. <laughs> Elijah went to Mount Carmel to prove what God would do. When he was put on trial, Baal's prophets were there too. Elijah built an altar for all around to see. Let the fire from heaven fall on me. Oh, let it fall on me. Let it fall on me. Let the fire of the Lord from heaven.
And I know these that are coming behind to preach and to minister, they need liberty. They need the Holy Ghost. You know, it's up to us as individuals to let the Lord have his way. The first verse. Elijah went to Mount Carmel to prove what God would do. When he was put on trial, Baal's prophets were there too. Elijah built an altar for all the around to see. Let the fire from heaven fall on me. Oh, let it fall on me. Let it fall on me. Let the fire of the Lord from heaven fall on me. The power of the Holy Ghost is fire that fell at Pentecost. Let the fire from heaven fall. from heaven to fall on us, don't we? We want to feel the power of the Holy Ghost, and we want the Lord to receive all the glory. And right now, we're going to have our Sunday school coordinators, Sister Daniel Hero, come forth and give us a boost for Sunday school. Praise the Lord for Sunday school. Oh, come on. Y'all get a little bit more excited. <laughs> um, y'all got to get excited because I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> I don't, it don't matter, Brother Little Dwayne said. You've done this a hundred times. It don't matter. I get more nervous the more I do it. But um, I'm thankful for what God's done this year, for his blessings, for just being with us. And like I always do every year, I don't, um, and I'll probably um, do this all the time, but I want to give honor to who honor is due. And we have some great, great superintendents and some great Sunday school teachers that's in our audience today. And if you are a superintendent or a local teacher at your church, please stand for me. Let's give them a hand. You know, I say it every year, um, I do the same thing every year, but you know, they work in their local church where I can't be there. Um, as much as I would love to help everybody all at the same time I can't do that but they are you are a ministry to your church to your local congregation and then I would just want to give you um, honor this morning this evening and thank you for what you do um, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started because if I don't I'll just say more than I need to up here so y'all just pray for me um, sister Marlowe has given us a theme of embrace the vision and the theme scripture is found in 2 Timothy 3 and 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. In thinking on the work ahead, I felt God saying that I needed to be willing to put my all that I have to in the work. And I shared this, this boost. It's not really changed very much from what I've had at the minister's convention and the district conventions, but I just felt, um, I guess more uh, impressed by the Lord to let me know that there's a work out there that we've got to do. And, you know, it's got to start with me. And um, I just felt a little impressed, or I felt very impressed by the Lord to add a little bit extra to the theme of embrace the vision. But it's time to awake is what I felt. And thinking upon this, it truly hit home. It is high time for the church to awake 
from a spiritual sleep and get to work for God. Do you agree? Amen. It is time for us to get out the, outside the four walls of the church and get to work for the Lord. We have slept for far too long thinking the work will get done but not involving ourselves in the work. The devil wants to lull us to sleep, to put a, a comfort on us and cause us to feel that we're okay to just let someone else do the work. Has the devil ever told you, now he's told me, and I'm sure he probably has you because he works on us all in some ways the same way, but he's ever told you, don't worry about that, let somebody else handle it because they can do a better job than you can, so you just let them do it. Well, that's the work of the enemy because we all have a work to do, and no matter what we're good at or what we may be lacking in, we all work together as a church, and we make a whole, and we can come together and do a work for the Lord um, in ways that you may not be able to do by yourself. But don't let the devil lull you into thinking that you don't need to go out and work. You don't need to do it because you count a lot in the church work. It, this work requires all of us, not just a portion, not just a small amount, but it requires 100% of our work. We sing a song that says, Wake Up, Sleeping Giant. And, you know, a lot of times that we sing the song, uh, Jacob and Addie and I, I never really thought of the song. You just kind of sing it sometimes. But I sat down and I listened to the words and I wrote, them, I wrote them down and sung them over in my head and got to thinking about, you know, what they really are saying. The chorus says, wake up, sleeping giant, and stand to your feet. We're living in the closing hour and it's too late to sleep. There's work in the harvest we must quickly do. Wake up, sleeping giant, our Lord's coming soon. How many today that are here know the Lord is coming very soon? It's closer now than it ever has been. The first verse says, God's church is a giant, powerful and strong. We've faced opposition, but we're still marching on. Some have grown weary and taken their ease, but it's time to wipe the sleep away from our eyes and stand to our feet. This couldn't be more truer now than ever. God's church is a giant that is powerful and strong. The devil knows that, and that's why he tries to lull us to sleep and put us at comfort, thinking that we're okay and some el someone else can do the work. And I've asked Toby, I know he's going to kill me. Come up here for a second. It's bad when you get up here and you use your family. <laughs> they get embarrassed quite often. But I thought about this as I was, we were doing the district conventions, and I kind of, I like having examples for me because it kind of helps me to understand it a little bit better. And maybe it'll help you understand it a little bit better. How many have kids here today? Raise your hands. Okay. How many of you that raised your hand has a kid that for some reason or another you cannot get them to wake up the first time you wake them up? Amen. <laughs> I have three. <laughs> All three of mine are hard kids to wake up. And as much as I love them, this one's the hardest one. <laughs> He'll agree, right? Yeah. Um, I love this one. I love all three of them. But this one right here is the hardest one to wake up in the morning. And Mama can probably attest to this because she's had to do it. But when I go in to wake up my boys in the morning, I wake them up and I say, Toby, and I just shake them just a little bit. It's time to wake up. How many has done that? You just kind of nudge them just a little bit. It's time to wake up. Well, that doesn't do a thing to this one. He just rolls over and goes right back to sleep. So I'll go in again another time. And this time I'll kind of shake him just a little bit more. And he gets annoyed with his mama and just shrugs it off and rolls over and back, goes back to sleep. But that third time that I walk in that room, I'm frustrated by now because I'm on a time schedule and I've got to get to work and he's got to get to school. Mama's on her way to pick him up. And I know if he's not ready by a certain time, he's going to be late, mama's going to be late, and I'm going to be late, and nobody's going to be happy. But I got to thinking of this in a spiritual way. How many times does the Lord nudge us and say, wake up? You got a work to do. Wake up. And we just roll over, Brother Little, and we don't do it. And then the Lord says, wake up. It's time to do work. And we just roll over and don't do it. And, you know, we just, we just feel at ease in, in where we are. But sometimes, please don't get mad at me, we have to say, wake up, which is what I do sometimes, right? And eventually, he gets up. And it's about the fourth time I have to get him up, but he gets up anyway. He's a good, he's good. But that's how the Lord does us sometimes. He has to, because if we don't wake up, we're going to lull ourselves asleep and let the enemy defeat us, and we will stay in our bed of slumber and rest and not do the work that he's called us to do. 
you know, and he gets up and he goes on about his day, we go about our day and we're fine. But if I didn't physically shake him and say, wake up, he would have never got up and he'd have slept right through on through the, the clock and through his school and he'd have never made it. And I would have never made it to work on time and mama would have been late getting the other kids to school. But because I shook him and he woke up, he got up and moved on and we, he went about his day. But how many times have you felt some, maybe this year, God shake you to the point where you knew it was the Lord talking to you and saying, wake up. It's time to wake up. You've got a job to do. And that's what I felt, you know, I guess that's what the Lord has kind of put in me and, and let me know, you know, you can't just sit back and think it's going to be at ease just to go through this life because we have got so much to accomplish and we won't do it in ourselves, but it's, the, it's God who can help us. But we've got to wake up. When we rise up to work for God, it makes the devil tremble because he knows that that's one more person spreading the gospel of Christ to the lost world. We must examine ourselves, as 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 says, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves, know you not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. I don't want to be a reprobate tonight. I don't want to be a reprobate in not doing the work of the Lord. And I looked that word up, and I got a, a couple of different definitions, but one I found that said, that which is rejected on account of its own worthlessness. And another one, it said, that is rejected I'm sorry. Uh, the, another reference that I found for it says, persons cast away or rejected because they have failed to make use of opportunities that were offered them. How many times have we been put in a place and offered an opportunity to witness to somebody and we just didn't take it? Because we may not have been where we needed to be or we were too tired. We just didn't recognize the opportunity that was placed in front of us. You know, we don't want to take any opportunities in the church that the God has given us, whether we're inside the four walls, outside the four walls, and take them for granted and not move with them because you never know what that person you're talking to may, ever, may need at that moment. We have so many opportunities each and every day to witness to souls that we come in contact with. We must make sure that we are where we need to be with God so that we can be a witness to that soul who needs to be with us. And I also got thinking about how many have ever had somebody when you're sitting maybe at home and um, are just relaxing, I know of somebody that will say this. I'll, my dad has done this many, many times. Um, but you look over at him and say, wake up, you're sleeping. I'm not sleeping, I've just got the rest of my eyes. How many have ever done that? I've said it myself. I'm just resting my eyes. Well, we can't do that either. We can't just sit there and say we're awake, but physically our eyes are closed. Our eyes spiritually need to be open to the Lord and his work. The second verse of that song talks about Samson. It says, Old Samson was mighty and filled with great power, raised up to judge Israel in a much crucial hour. But in a time of great weakness, he was lured to sleep. He slept too long and found his strength gone when he stood to his feet. Samson was blessed by God and given great strength to deliver Israel from the Philistines, but he lost sight of his task. You know, we are too close and too late in the hour to lose sight of what our task is here. You know, sure, we have jobs to work. I'm going to go to a job on Monday uh, morning when I get up, and I'm going to be tired because we've been at camp all week and convention, but I have somewhere I have to be a point, go to to make money to live here. But in doing that, I also have to be a witness, and I have to be ready to do a work and shine a light to them. He laid his head in the lap of Delilah after telling her where his strength came from, and he awoke having no strength at all. He was bound while he was sleeping, and he lost the power that was given to him by God. Spiritually speaking, we can't afford to sleep and lay our heads in the lap of our adversary. We cannot afford to lose what God has given to us, and we, ought, we should be about the work that he has given us to do. Romans 13, 11, and 12 says, and that, knowing, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Our mindset has got to change. We can't continue to hold the world and God at the same time. And um, when I thought about the mindset, you know, we all have different mindsets of things that we want to change about ourselves or change in, maybe in our homes and how we want things to work a little bit better. Um, but in order to get them to change, we've got to have the mindset to do it. And it doesn't work any differently spiritually. 
um, we have to have a mindset spiritually to say, Lord, whatever your will is, that's what I want. Whether it's easy to do, whether it's easy to say, you know, we all have comfort zones that we are comfortable with being in and not wanting to get out of them. And until we get out of those comfort zones, God can't fully use us. But we have got to get to the place where we can let him use us. And it's not easy. I'm not saying that, you know, once you do it, it's going to be the easiest thing. Um, you know, I can You know, the Lord gives us strength and he gives us uh, encouragement. And he will always give you a push. You know, he won't lead you somewhere and leave you there. You in the process that he... We can continue to hold on to the world and to God at the same time. But we have to do, as Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, seeing, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run the pace, race. Let us run with patience the race that is set before The work will not be done by us sitting and expecting others to do our jobs. It is going to take each and every one of us working together to get the work done. Our mind, mindset should be, what can I do for the work of the Lord and not what can God do for me? The Lord didn't give us a, visit, a vision to sit at ease, but he gave it to us so that we can share it with a lost and dying world. And I want to end with this scripture. It's in 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And I got, we, Mom and I went to Texas about two weekends ago um, to their state convention, and it was an honor just to be able to go and sit with our folks down in Texas and enjoy being with them in state convention. But their theme for the convention that year was Fruit of the Spirit. And... Someone had a, a picture of a tree, I think, and put it up on, um, they had a screen there that someone was talking about the, uh, what they were speaking on, and it, they had a big old tree, and I am not a plant person, I don't have a clue what the weakest tree is and what the best tree is, I'm just not that type of person. So this morning I asked Kevin, I said, what is the strongest tree? It's an oak tree. Well, I didn't know that, but I got to thinking about, you know, what makes a tree really strong? And in, in this scripture, I was thinking, there, it says, Therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast, unmovable. And for a tree to be very strong, they've got to have a very good root system. And in order for us as Christians to be very strong Christians, we've got to have a very good root system. And it's got to be very steadfast in the word of God and grounded in his word. And if we're not steadfast and we're not grounded, then we will be tossed to and fro with every wind that comes our way. But I want, you know, I want this work to be something that we do with a joyful heart and be steadfast and strong like that old strong oak tree that soaks in all the water from the, from the Lord that he brings and gives. And you can grow and use that in your life and not in your life, but only in your life, but in your churches. As our previous Sunday School Quarter literature talked about self, self must die in order for the Lord to use us fully in his work. Sure, there are going to be. We will get this work completed with Christ giving us the strength and grace that we need to make it through. As I've said before, the work will get done. Why not be a part of seeing a soul saved? It only takes one to create a domino effect. Um, let it begin with you. Let the work begin in your local church. Let the work begin when you go home. And it's not just in your churches. You know, the Sunday school doesn't just stop when you leave the door of the church. It's in the community. It's everything out there. You can go out there and you can sit in a nursing home and have a Sunday school lesson with somebody and you're having Sunday school. You can have children's church where you're working through the Sunday school program. It's all under that umbrella of the Sunday school. So let it start with you. Don't leave here today thinking I'm minute, I can't do the job, I don't really have much to offer the Sunday school department. Yes, you do. You are one in a million and you can do exactly what the Lord wants you to do. You can be a blessing, you can be a strength, and an encouragement of those around you. But God bless the Sunday school. Thank the Lord for our Sunday schools. And uh, I hope
hope that we all let the Lord wake us up and we make it to Sunday school on time. Uh, there's a great blessing in being in Sunday school, and we must remember also that uh, being faithful and attending Sunday school is a part of being faithful because it is a part of our responsibilities and obligation as members of the body. So uh, let your alarm clock or the Lord or whatever you need wake you up to get to Sunday school. All right, we're going to be getting ready to have a, a boost for our expense offering. Uh, Brother Rodney is coming to uh, give us a boost. He's on his way. It feels good in here. Amen. Thank the Lord that we're able to have a, a, a center like this instead of going outside and sitting in a big old field. Amen. But it costs something. Uh, but I know the one who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. I know the one who, who owns it all. Amen. But let us give. It's given unto the Lord. Because that's exactly what we're doing. We say that so much, but we're giving unto the Lord. Amen. It feels good in here. Let, let's, uh, let's stand. I know we're few tonight, but I want us to go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to take this offering and multiply it. One time he said, just go and fish over here. And he said, in that fish's mouth. appreciate your giving, and we're thankful how the Lord has blessed us and enabled us to enjoy the facilities that we're able to enjoy for as long as we have, and I appreciate your help. When the altar call is made, uh, those that desire to come to the altar will be able to. But at the same time, uh, Brother McGriff is going to coordinate a healing line. And so anyone that uh, desires to go through a healing line, uh, it will be over here to uh, my left, uh, over this side of the auditorium, and uh, you will see Brother McGriff and uh, those that he has uh, for the healing line. And 
this is something that we're going to be doing for each of our altar serv services. And in addition, when the altar call is made, any who desire to go through the healing line, there will be one for each of those occasions. So um, we want you to be able to receive whatever you need and whatever the Lord wants to do. All right, so this time we're going to get ready to turn it into Brother Hill's hands and let him come before us just as, as the Lord has impressed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Feels kind of odd being the guest speaker when you're at home. <laughs> this is still home. I still have Tar Heel blood running through my veins. Amen. <laughs> uh, thank the Lord for the privilege of being here. Uh, thank Him for what He's done in my life the last two years. Most of you know my testimony. You've seen me at my worst. Well, I don't know if you've seen me at my worst, but um, and I don't. I don't want to. I wasn't planning on testifying, but uh, most of you probably know my testimony. But um, God has been so good to me, and you're looking at a miracle standing before you. Uh, he took me from being struggling just to get out of the bed every morning to this past year traveling to eight different countries preaching all over the world staying busy headquarters is keeping me busy wide open and I, I, I love it um, I, I'm so thankful for what God has done in my life um, for the miracle of divine healing uh, there's still power in the church of God amen God is still moving and working in the church of God Listen, we've heard several, Sister Morrow and Sister uh, Tanya, uh, one or both of them said there's problems in the church. That makes it even more of a problem. It shouldn't surprise us that the, the enemy is fighting against the church of God. But the fact we need to remember is Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of God. Amen? Amen. God can problems. Amen. But as I want to thank Sister Mora. I assume she's watching online because I don't see her here. Um, lack of power of God. Amen, Brother Henders. And it, it grieves my heart to pray and study and try to. I guess one of my problems is I'm, I'm a pro, I like to solve problems. If I see a problem in my mind, I like to solve it. Well, the, if, if we look in the, in the Word of God, as, as we'll see tonight, the lack of power, the solution isn't that hard. Amen. The solution to our problems, 